Matt, let's get into the big story. Uh, biggest, obviously, story, pun intended. And that is going to be the return of Mackay Becton. Um, and his press conference that he had wore a very uh, enticing shirt, kind of calling out the haters directly. Had big bust in the middle of it with a bunch of words circling around like fat, lazy, overweight, uh, sucks, things along that nature. And, and I think it was pretty clear that he was trying to make a statement that he's motivated and he's ready to prove everybody wrong. His exact words were, I'm going to make everyone eat their words. So I'm excited to see how he does, but it's definitely interesting that he was out for so long and we're still questioning exactly what's going on with his knee. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the situation I'm leaning more towards blaming the jets and their medical uh, team, because from everything I've heard from everybody else, uh, from Duke Merriweather to even just other doctors, they've all said that this kind of injury should have been diagnosed as being longer term. Uh, so I'm kind of leading more towards the medical staff just kind of blowing this up. And I really don't like that, if that is the case, that they haven't come out and really confirmed that. Uh, I know maybe that's uh, that might open themselves up to liability or just make them just look bad. Uh, but at the same time, they're putting everything on this 22-year-old right now and kind of forcing uh, the hate in his direction. Uh, whether it's warranted or not, uh, I lean towards not. I think he's going to be ready to play uh, once uh, training camp rolls around. I think uh, he was only in uh, the training area uh, this week, mostly just out of caution. Uh, same with a lot of other players like Fant and Lawson as well. Uh but either way, uh, he's not on the field yet. We haven't gotten to see him since his rookie year. So there's a lot of question marks there. But uh, at the same time, there's still a lot that we can be encouraged about. Yeah, I think so, too. And I completely agree that that something's not quite right about the timeline the Jets gave when this first happened, where obviously it was week one in Carolina. He got hurt about halfway through the game. And I believe it was the next day, if not very shortly after that, they had an MRI done on his knee. Everyone was worried about a possible torn ACL. And it came out that his ligaments were clean and that he didn't have any tears. And from there, we heard four to eight weeks, roughly. Going to miss time, but not the whole season. Well, he ended up missing the whole season. Mm -hmm. And like you said, everyone else outside of the organization that has anything to do with Mackay Becton at all has said that it really wasn't a realistic timeline and that his knee needed a lot longer to get back into playing shape. And I listened to obviously Becton's own press conference and he was asked about, you know, was there any setbacks? Was there any issues, things that maybe took longer or, you know, do you have a problem in rehab? And he was explaining that, no, he really didn't have any setbacks or anything like that. First, he had to work on getting his range of motion back, and then he had to work on getting the strength in his knee back to be able to get to play. And he had the range of motion, but he just didn't get the strength yet. And for a guy like Mackay Becton, for the future of his career, and clearly if this was a ticky-tacky, maybe he's healthy enough to play, maybe he isn't, I think we would know. I don't think there was any chance he was ever close to playing during the season. And I think the timetable of oh, four to six weeks that we heard in week one that never got an update, even after it was well past that timetable had expired. You know, I think that really set some unfair expectations. So I agree with you that 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 is a big part of this. And the other part that I don't think is getting mentioned as much is for Mackay Becton's own sake and will and future for him and his body as a person and as a player and as a human being. If he were to try and rush his way back from this injury when his knee was, as he's saying it, not strong enough to handle what he needed it to do, it could move the way he needed it to do, but not handle the strength and the requirements of the joint. He could have really seriously messed his knee up for the rest yeah. of his career. He, well, he could have ended his career outright and, and never gotten back to that point and never gotten to the strength. And it could have been a problem that, you know, took the rest of his life. And like you said, he's very young. I, I'm sure he didn't want to potentially give himself a debilitating knee injury when he was that young. And at some point through the year, he probably found out he had a kid on the way and yeah. said, I need to make sure my body is right so that I can continue playing and be here for my, the family that I am now starting. I, I really think that a lot of people 
hung uh, got hung up on the time frame from the Jets. And I think the Jets were really eager to be like, nothing's torn. That's great. Maybe he can come back in four to six, four to six, eight weeks, something like that. It's, you know, it's not going to be a season ending injury. And then it just never healed the way they had that as quickly as they had hoped. I don't want to say the way that they had hoped, because I don't think that's quite right. I just don't think they heal. It healed as quickly as they were hoping. And I'm expecting that Mekhi Becton is going to be able to come into training camp and perform at full strength. If not, then I do think we have an issue we can start talking about. But until then, I'm not worried. See, but they also the team also did something else that's a little dubious. They didn't just mess up the timeline. They also kind of made him the scapegoat in using his weight as an excuse for this. Uh, and sure, yes, he did balloon up to 400 plus pounds. And yes, this absolutely did impact his ability to heal and gain his strength back. But at the same time, that storyline on its own has taken life and is being is feeding the haters out there. Uh, right now, that's like their their biggest talking point is that he can't stay uh, at an acceptable weight. And by all accounts, he's definitely under 400 pounds now. Uh, he's definitely not in the same shape as he was uh, in his rookie year, uh, just eyeing photos uh, online. But even that could be deceiving. So I think he's most of the way back. But at the same time, it sounds... And Oh, and also, uh, they uh, are quick to praise everybody else for how in shape they are and how good they look. Uh, but they, they, at the same time, don't mention Beckton at all in, in that conversation. And instead, kind of throw it back on him to make it seem like he's the bad guy. Yeah, um, I don't disagree with you. However, I am going to play a little bit of both sides here because I can kind of see a little bit of of how this can be misinterpreted for uh, on each side of the coin. Where first off, you're saying they were kind of using his weight as a scapegoat. and And at my core, I agree with you. I genuinely think that they were kind of nonchalantly saying, you know, he's really big. That's why it's taking longer His, you know, if he was in better shape or he wasn't as heavy, it would be easier. But I can also see where they're trying to say from the understanding perspective of that's a lot of weight. His knees got to be strong to hold and that he's naturally genetically always going to be big. There's only so small he can ever get just with the composition of his body and the makeup of the human being where they could have been saying from the argument of he's bigger. That's why it's taking longer. We understand. We were hoping that this was going to be the case, but you know, it really isn't, you know, because he's so much bigger, but you mentioned the point they're praising everyone else. They can get their hands on about their athleticism and body and how much shape they're in. If they've put in the work to do so, if the results are obvious and they speak for themselves, then they'll talk about it. But we didn't hear that about Becton. Part of it is that he wasn't there. And because he was there, taking care of his newborn kid and his pregnant wife, who was very nearly giving birth or girlfriend, excuse me, either way. Um, that's a very obvious reason for him not to be there for non mandatory team activities. Now they get a look at him. We didn't hear any resounding immediate praise or, or anything else. So I don't necessarily think that he came in in all-star perfect shape, but I don't think it was to the point of concerning to where if it was again, we physically would have seen it for a guy that big. Yes. He's always going to be big, big in some pictures, maybe unflattering as others, but this is another point I want to add in Matt, And I think this is really important for fans to remember. We all remember Makai Becton and the number of the weight in his head and how big he is and how big he's going to be when he's playing or not based on what he weighed at the combine, because that's his official listed measurement. And that was 363 pounds. Makai Becton worked his tail off to get to 363 for the combine. He was, that was, I'm going to train and be in the best shape I possibly can and run as fast as I can. And he ran a great 40 for his size, as everyone remembers. And that was him at 363. I don't think he's playing at that weight. Mm -mm. I don't think that that's what he's actually weighing when he's in the season and playing and on the field. I think he's at least 370, if not more. And if you told me Mikai Becton played at 375, I'd believe you. Is that astronomical? Is that crazy? Is that unheard of? Yeah, that's that's heavier than 99% of all NFL players are ever going to be. But there's those rare 
special few guys that the league has seen throughout the years that are just built that way. And even though they are that heavy, they can carry the weight and they're good enough athletes to be fluid enough and agile enough on their feet to make up for it. And I think Mekhi Becton is one of those guys. So I'm not so worried about a number on the scale. But if the number on the scale is affecting his ability to stay healthy, is affecting his conditioning, then that's where it becomes a problem. If Mekhi Becton's playing at 375 and doesn't miss any games and doesn't have to come out and his playing great and his stamina is all there, I don't care that he's 375. But if he's 375 and it's leading to him missing time and it's leading to him getting gassed out early in games or, or having other issues, then that's where it becomes an issue. Right now, I don't know where to say is if, if it is an issue or not, because I think this was his rookie year. We saw him get hurt. He missed a couple of games, but he was able, um, you know, played well before that, stayed healthy for most of the year before that. This past year, he got a freak injury. He got rolled up on. It's not like this is he went to plant and there was so much weight on his leg that his leg gave out or he took a wrong step or this was a, a random you know event not caused by anything he did or didn't do. And it caused him to miss the year because his rehab took longer than we all heard that it might have to start with. I don't know if that says he's always going to be injury prone or if that says he had some bad luck early and he'll be able to rebound. But but I'm not going to let the number on the scale be the deciding factor because the number is going to be misleading anyway. And it's all about the results for me at the end of the day. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. It's all about the results. Uh, yeah. If he's playing 375, 380, but he's still able to play full term. And, right. uh, but and, if he's a top 15 for, left tackle, is anyone going to care? Who, who cares? Yeah. I, I don't think anybody really knows what his playing weight was uh, either at college or his rookie season or even going into his uh, sophomore season. Uh, nobody knows. And we can all throw out numbers online. Uh, we want to see him at, at 350. We want to see him at 364. Uh, like, I don't think there's no, any way he could even possibly get to 350. Like That's I what he, I want he people might be to underweight. understand. He is, might be right, underweight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like 350 might not be a good weight for him. Like that's like We got to understand we're dealing with a different caliber of human being here. And that if Mekhi Becton doing everything he can in the offseason for combine training, whether he did or didn't is, you know, we don't know his exact training regimen, but I'd like to assume that he did everything he could physically to be as agile and athletic as possible because he knew he was already going to have the weight to back it up. If he had to work his tail off to get to 363, I don't think he's playing at 363. 